but now it happened my friend has got friends from Nairobi who came and told her that um, you know what there is something else you can do uh, you don't have to sleep with men so that they can give you money you will only use this drug to you know to put in their drinks and then when they sleep you rob them of all everything they have and when my friend told me that I was like so happy because I was like oh my goodness I can take advantage of them before they do to me sometimes I robbed even so much money like 200k 100k 70k I have ruined my life I have lived my life lecherously and I'm like even physically I don't feel like I'm beautiful you know I because I'm known I'm known by men and now they don't want me because now they like I'm old I feared people to see me why because I hated myself in the inside I did not like what I was doing I did not like who I was because I let the world corrupt me I let the world give me a version of who I am not My name is Shiga Dombe and I'm a mother, a daughter and a sister. I grew up in a family of nine with both parents and I was a church girl. I was brought up in church. The church that I was going when I was a little child was the church I was in when I was 16 years old. And during that time that is when now I started seeing like my father is neglecting his family and everything is falling. So there is something that happened in my family. There was a mis misunderstanding. My cousin and my mom, they had a misunderstanding and that misunderstanding was taken in the church. And um, nobody wanted to associate, to associate with her anymore. And at that time, she felt alone and she stopped even going to church. So that also affected me and also our family at large for the direction I took. And at that time, that is when now I am sinking deeper. I'm wanting to know more because a child have, a, that, have that curious feelings. They want to know more what happens in the world. And at that time, I think my, my mother also sinked into depression. And I believe that everything that happened had a reason. Because when I went out there, it, it, it did not even take um, so much time. I met a guy and I became pregnant. So he was like denying the pregnancy and showing that he have got nothing to do with it. So I was so crushed. I was crushed. And that, that rejection was eating me inside. I was young and I felt so bad. I felt so bad and I, I hated. I hated that moment. I hated that guy and I did not even argue. I did not. We just went home. It was the, I don't know. <laughs> it was like, I don't know. It uh, crushed my life. That maybe was the starting of the things that I will meet in my life, the negativities and everything. So when I gave birth to my child, I did not go back to the same school. I even went to, to a boarding school. Now I left my mother with my child. She was one month old at that time. And I went to the school. But unfortunately, 
it was so difficult to study because I was thinking about our home. I was thinking about the situation, the circumstance, the challenges that we all go through. Now my mother, yeah, beside, you know, beside my siblings now, there is also another mouth to feed my child. At that time now, I started, um, I started hooking myself with people, like men, older men who can provide for me because even the basics, even to carry basics at school, to go with the shopping, it was a difficult thing to do because my mother couldn't provide that. And my father doesn't even want to know how we are raised, how we will eat, how we will school, how we will study. He doesn't even come to the meetings. He doesn't care about all that. So uh, just like I, I am a mother, I am still thinking about my family and the situation at home. So whenever I will sleep with a man, given the money, I will think about having some shopping and then carrying some more shopping at home. So that's how I fall in that, um, in that trap. I remember there was this time now I am sent home from school to go for school fees. I did not go at home. I went straight to the club, even with the uniform. At that time, it was 2005, to be precisely. I went to the club and I stayed there and I found friends, some other girls who were of my age. And they told me that I can even go to their homes they had rented already the houses, but they were staying in slums. So they invited me to their houses and I went there. I stayed for a week without my mother knowing where I was and even the school. So my mother still was looking for me and I went back to, to, to home. I went back home. When I went back home, I found my mother and my mother took me to the school and she said that I had, I was not at home. So I was expelled. I was informed for it at that time. I had to finish school even though I was expelled. So I, I was registered to do KCSE. I went, I was going every morning with the bus, with the bus that takes the exams. So I could go and do the exam and then be brought back at home. After I finished the KCSE, I was happy because I wanted to run away from home. I didn't want to be associated with that family. But still, I was thinking about my baby. I wanted to go make a life. I didn't know how, but I wanted to go make a life so that I can stay with my son, so that I can be a good mother. And not knowing that I will still be getting in that hole because I have, I don't have confidence. I have low self-esteem. I don't have courage, you know. And uh, at that moment, now this girl, who saw me, she's like telling me, you can do it. She was very ambitious. She could uh, be with men, you know, like let's say classy men and being given money and she could provide for her sister because her sister was having a baby and she was staying at home. So she was telling me, it's possible, you can do it too. So now I started full job, full time, yani full job at night, going at night, because now my, my, my child is with this uh, friend, this sister's friend, so we could go together. And we could gather money, we could provide, but 
it is not money that uh, can be called money because it doesn't stay. It's just like easy come, easy go. And now my, my brother, my older brother dies. He died because of um, accident in the car road, fatal accident. And so it was also the hardest part of my life. So after now, everything that has happened, I started. Now the girl, the friend now, told me that there is also a green pasture now. We are not going to stay here in Nyeri. We are going to go to Nakuru. So she took me, we went to Nakuru. So with time, I was able to save money. But still, I just want to stay in the hotel. I'm not decided. I am not even decided to settle in this town. I'm not decided to anything. I hated even the light. And I feared, I feared people. I feared even to go outside, to even, you know, like go to the toilet or even go to throw rubbish outside. I feared people to see me. Why? because I hated myself in the inside. I did not like what I was doing. I did not like who I was because I let the world corrupt me. I let the world give me a version of who I am not. And then it happened, I met a guy who was um, a soldier, he was, like a major, but he had a problem. He, has, he had a, an addiction problem. Like I was maybe 21, 22, and his money now became like sweet because I was there. And he had a wife, they had separated, and he still had another wife who they were staying with. But the first wife, their children, they were living with, the, with, his, with his mother. And he's telling me that he doesn't want that wife, he wants me. He was even helping me. I was sending money at home and he took me to his family. But when his family saw me, they said that the first wife was so bad and he was a Nyerian. So they don't want me because I'm a Nyerian. I was emotionally withdrawn. I could not love anybody because of the hate and the dejection that I went through when the father of my baby rejected me. So I, we did not stay together and we parted. After that, I decided now to rent a house, a single room in Nakuru. I rent a house and I stayed there for some time. But now it happened, my friend has got friends from Nairobi who came and told her that, um, you know what, there is something else you can do. Uh, you don't have to sleep with men so that they can give you money. You will only use this drug to, you know, to put in their drinks. And then when they sleep, you rob them of all everything they have. And when my friend told me that, I was like so happy because I was like, oh my goodness, I can take advantage before a man takes, take advantage of me. I can take advantage of them before they do to me. I could go with them where they have rented a room and then we could buy beers, can beers, and I could go and put the drugs inside their drinks. And they could take, and after that they could sleep, and I would rob them all of their money. Sometimes I robbed even so much money, like 200K, 
100k, 70k, they could not, the money could not even help me because I was paying debts, I was um, buying things in my house, like furnishers, like everything that I needed. But at times I could go broke. Like I would start now picking those, those uh, furnishers and uh, the TVs and the whatevers and take them to Shyrock. And when I take them to Shyrock, they could stay there and I could not afford to take them back to my house. So that's how my life was like. And I knew that I loved God inside me. I could even pray. I could pray and I could tell God to change my life. I would want to change. I would even go to look for a job, but I would not even find a job. And I was like, I hated myself. I hated myself. And sometimes I even wanted to die. But I knew that my heart was filled with bitterness, hatred. It was filled with revenge. I wanted to revenge. And that's why I was even preventing myself to feel and to care. The only people that I cared for is my family. But now it happened that I got another man. At one time, he wanted me to leave that kind of work and just be, you know, like change. He knew that I could get a lot of money. And I'm like, I don't love him. Yes, I pretend sometimes, and yes, I feel love sometimes, but I was against myself. And I'm telling myself, no, you cannot even love a married guy. You cannot even be loved. You cannot even love. That is not what you're supposed to do. And I think those are limited beliefs that keeps us in one place. Maybe there were limited beliefs that I was taught when I was growing up, you know, like called Alusa, a failure that like you will never make it in life or you just crashed by the environment that you are raised in. Those beliefs that we bought up in our memory because our mind, I say, is like a computer. It downloads everything that is seen. So you can imagine the mind of a child. It is recording everything that it happens in, the, the, in their lives. If the life is filled with negativity, they will correct all that and keep it in the memory. So um, I just stayed there and these guys now telling me that, uh, Lydia, um, I used to be um, not a good guy. I also was a thief. So maybe we can, I can join my older group and we can go rob. And then when I come with that money, only for once, when I come with that money, you can use it to keep a business and you can change your life and stop doing this. And I was like, that's a good idea, you know? And it happened that I, when he went to rob that shop, uh, he was arrested, not immediately, but after some time, see, I've come home with the money, but it was not so much. It was um, shared between the group that he was with. And he came home with that money. He gave me some, some cash. And it was little considering the money that I get. So I'm like spreading it, overspreading it, and it did not even help me. After some time, he was arrested because there was phones involved. And when those phones were tracked, they showed his location and he was arrested. After he was arrested, he was taken to the police station. After the court, he was taken to the jail. He was convicted for 
four years, but because he was he became a trustee inside, he was given three years. And it was also so difficult for me because I stayed with that guy for three years. So it was a Sunday, I remember very well. I went into this nightclub. There was no, not so many people were there. I sit in my counter. And when I stay in the counter, the waiter comes and he sold me a, 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 a drink and I'm like, I'm waiting for someone. And then this guy just comes and he was like, uh, he buys me everything, whatever I want. He's like just ordering. And me, I'm like, I don't want even to go to sleep right now. Even if, you know, it's how the alcohol is showing me. Because it's early. It's like at night, at nine. So I'm like, I don't want to go to sleep right now. And um, the guy is telling me, let's go. Even where, where we are going, there is a club. So let's go drink there. And then we can go to sleep. Or maybe we can even get cans and we can go to sleep. And I agreed. So we go, we drink for some time in that club where his house is. And then we go for the room. And we, we go upstairs at the room. Inside the room, I have my, my, I have my drug and we are carrying cans. And then I take my Red Bull and then put the drug there. And the guy just drinks. After he drinks, he will stay for some like one minute or two minutes because he was drunk and then he will sleep. After he is asleep, I will start searching in the pockets and find the money, 200K together. And I know that there is a difficulty in coming out. So I go out and I'm like, I found the soldier there. The soldier is asking me, where are you going? And I'm like, I came with this guy from Kiricho and now he just want to sleep. And I want to go here and dance a little bit. And I'm very confident because I am drunk. So the guy tells me, and I'm even asking and pretending, do you know that club that you hear that music? Where is it coming from? Can you show me? So the guy is like confused and he tells me, yes, I will show you, but you're gonna buy me some drinks, right? I told him, yes, no problem. And we went there. And when we are upstairs, I'm like, take this 500, go and buy it for yourself. So when he runs to the counter, I ran to the toilet and then went out. Uh, downstairs and I disappear with the money. I go home. So that money, I would use it to maybe do, you know, pay the debts, buy whatever I want and provide some things, you know, basics at my family. And my mother was not impressed with whatever I was doing. She was telling me because she knew it. She was telling me, stop, don't do that. She was always praying for me. But you see, unconsciously, she's the one who is chasing me out of the home. Because as parents, they are supposed to take the responsibilities of their children. But they don't do it. Unconsciously, they don't know. So I am here now, even when I was with that boyfriend who is arrested, I was still doing it because he could come home and I would tell him, if you don't have money, I'm going out. I've gathered a lot of money. Like let's say if I correct them together, I could count like maybe five million because to say the truth, I was, I was lucky. Like I could go and find. And I think that is what the devil wanted me to be hooked at so that 
I can stay there. You know, I can chase, I can go on chasing, chasing, chasing. And I could create that pattern so that I will never help myself. And at the end, I die. Because I remember now when I was coming now, I was coming to leave this job. I was like, now I have done this job like a whole decade. Now I'm tired. Now I am ashamed. Now I'm even sick. I have, my blood pressure is climbing up. I, I am now even like, I have lost hope, the hope of changing. Because I, maybe I was hoping maybe I can meet someone and maybe be married. I'm not married, I'm, all, I'm 30. You know, I have ruined my life. I have lived my life like And I'm like, even physically, I don't feel like I'm beautiful, you know. I, because I'm known. I'm known by men. And now they don't want me because now they, like, I'm old. You know, they want the newcomers now. Now I'm like... I don't I no longer want to stay in Nakuru because I feel that my support system is gone. So I want to go back home and also my mother is calling me. She is telling me that she have got some cash and she, she can take me to college. And I think this is I am thinking now this is my moment of transformation and transitioning. So I went back home. I carried everything that I had, my son, we went back home. So I went to college, but even though I'm in college, I'm now deep in the forest of addictions. You know, addictions of easy come, addictions of entertainment, addictions of money, easy, you know, easy money, addictions of alcohol, and addictions of, uh, you know, like I cannot do it without a man. And I am, I look for a job when I go to college, but there is no, I did not get, because maybe I'm like, I, I have, the picture of the job that I want. So if I don't get that, I will not work. So I will opt to go back to my former job so that I can be able to get this easy money and big money to provide for myself and also my, my son. So when I went in college, my mother was only providing school fees. Basics is me, rent is me, and the child, because he is in school, is me. So I have to gather myself and I have to deliver and pay the bills. So I finished the college, but I'm still hooked up and I can't be able to come out of this web. I can't be able to come out of this hypon hypnosis and then one day, I don't know, it was also a sad day. I went to a club at night in Nairobi. And I stay there, dance, and there is no catch. So in the morning, there is a guy who comes. I'm drunk, like drunk. A guy comes in the counter. We started talking. He buys me a, a drink. And then... The grass that is, he is drinking with, I drop a drug. Everybody is watching. <laughs> Even the, the waiter. So they called the police on me and I was arrested. And the police station that I was taken to, I went there, I was drunk. I was so drunk, like drunk. And I slept in the cell, but when I woke up, I called my sister. And when I called my sister, she, 
she came and she also told my boyfriend. They came. They came with even the money. And they called even the guy that I dragged. And the guy wanted to even, the, he, doesn't, he didn't want anything to do with the case. So he was ready to take the money. But the OCS said that you're going to have to run a race on. You will never put a drug into a man's, into another person's um, drink. So you're going to go to the court, let these people get you from the court. So I went to the court. At that day, nobody came. And I was prosecuted and I was asked to pay a board of 200k I didn't have and I was taken to the prison I stayed there for almost seven months it was even seven months and when I was staying in the prison I went there like for me today, I say it's God who took me there. Because I went there, I did reflections, and I know that, right now I know that addictions are so hard to leave. And, you know, like facing yourself, it's so hard to do. It's not an easy work. So I went there, I started praying. I even got saved in jail. I felt like I was in prison of my mind and, in, you know, a physical prison at the same time because I could not come into reality with, the, with everything that was happening. And even when I was there, the funny part is that I was not thinking of myself. I was thinking about other people. I was thinking about my family. I was thinking about my son. I was not thinking about my life. And that is when reality dawned. When I look at it right now is that so many people are dying because of others. You are carrying the burdens of other people, thinking that they can do the same for you. Where else you're sinking and they cannot even pull you and they cannot even help you. And at that moment, I saw that so many people, they, they want to see their families thriving. They don't want to see their family hungry. They don't want to see their family having problems. And when they go there, nobody will take their burden. They suffer alone. Why? Because you're giving from a place of an empty cup. And when you give from a place of an empty cup, you have not filled your cup first. You don't have anything. You're just giving what you have. Others give even their seed, the seed that God gave them to plant first. They give it away. Why? Because their families are so demanding. Uh, their families are the ones who are controlling them. Uh, some people are controlled even by their parents. Their marriages are controlled by their parents. They don't even know. And they, the parents, they, they, they ruin people's marriages. Why? Because they are telling their sons how to do the marriage, how to walk in the marriage, and they are telling even their daughters. And then when I was in that cage of prison, I saw that you cannot, you, you have no freedom. You are controlled. In everything that you do, you have to be controlled. And you have to be commanded. And it was not even different with the life that I was living. Because the life that I was living, um, the only difference was I was free. But even when I was free, I did not use that freedom well. Because I was learning away from the law. 
but I was not even doing as the law said. So I was uh, being commanded by my needs or whatever was I was carrying, that was what was commanding me. And my day came and I was arrested and taken to the jail. I've stayed for seven months, all six months and a half, and now I don't know how to come out. And my mother is asking her parents to give the title and she have the our grandma has given us the title and all of a sudden the title is rejected and i'm like what else i'm gonna do and now i'm thinking of the guy now who i wronged and i asked my sister if she still have the contact and they called him when they called him, he said even he doesn't know if I'm still in prison. And he said that he will come and we add all that. He came and he forgave me and I was back home. But when I was, I went back home, a week did not even pass without me going back to jail because of the another, um, another still another man that I have loved through dragging still, and he caught me in a crab, and he told me that he, he took me to the police station again. He called police on me, and I was arrested still in a club. And when I was taken to a club now, I think now that was my wake-up call, and I stayed in jail still for like two months or three months. And I was feeling so remorseful. I was feeling so, I was pitying myself. Considering my father came to see me, my father have never stolen anything that doesn't belong to him, my mother too. And I felt so remorseful. I felt so embarrassed. And on top of it, embarrassing my parents. And I was like, now I'm serious. I wanted just to change. So I, con I, I contacted the guy when I was so harbored before him. And I told him that, please, if he can forgive me, I will never do that again because of my son because I was almost even giving up. I was, uh, the next time, this second time, I was given still a board of 250K. So I was like now, because this, this was a, almost an attempted murder. So I was like, I will go and, I, I will go and say I did it so that I can be um, convicted and start my, you know, that process. So the guy um, agreed to come meet my sister, they organized everything, and we went to the court again, and he forgave me. And when we were in the court, the same judge, the same prosecutor, who released me the first time, were the same people. So it was like, if God used these people, it was like he's warning me never to go where I was, never to go back there. So I was like, I'm telling God now, you have shown me what you can do. You have shown me even miracles inside that jail. People, I was praying for people and they were being released. Please show me the way now. I don't know how you can open this door, but please open. And my sister at that time, she was a pharmacist. So also her job has collapsed. It was not, you know, like it was not producing anything. And it, um, an opportunity came from a friend she was schooling with. She was in Egypt. And she was telling her, you can come to Egypt. We will make you a visa and um, 
passport and we'll pay for you a ticket, you know. And then you, when you come and when you reach here, you can start paying that debt. And that is what my sister did. She was the first one to go there in Egypt. And she stayed for six months and I joined her. And when I joined her, my mind was refusing to adopt change. So I fall into depression. I was judging myself. I was, you know, condemning myself. I could not sleep. I was having insomnia. And I was so bitter. I was, you know, like I was bitter with my mother. I was bitter with so many people who have made me go through all that process. It was hard to you know, to accept myself, forgive myself. I was denying myself. I was pity partying myself. I was not even loving the job that I was doing because I was telling myself I'm not supposed to do that kind of a job. And after some time, I started, you know, going in YouTube and I found this, the daughter of T.D. Jakes, who is called Sarah Jakes Robert, and I started connecting with her story, how she got a baby 13 years, when she was 13 years old, and she was a, a girl of a pastor, you know, a bishop, and it was painful, because she also got in a marriage that was very abusive, and I started the journey of healing. It was not easy. I had to cry. And I, I think I did it for two years, the journey of healing. And during that time, the two years that I went in Egypt, I was fasting. I couldn't deny myself even food. You know, I could not, I could even see you know, like my employers talking and I feel like they were talking about me because I could not come into terms with the past life. And I could not accept that I was the one who, who went through that, all those things. And I was shaming myself. It was hard to accept that I was a masterpiece because I was a victim a victim of everything that I have gone through. I was blaming everyone, complaining and feeling guilty. I was feeling guilty and I was saved. And that's why I, I, I always tell people that salvation is a journey of grace. You give, your, you, a self, you give yourself a permission to accept grace and accept that love of God so that you can, it can heal you and so that God can adopt you. And when you accept that, you can be able to give others, uh, you know, like others love, you can be able to give hope, you can be able to have peace of mind because the word of God says that for, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. So when I went, um, on, you know, reading the Bible for myself, praying for myself, fasting, and having this conversation with God. And I, I was like, something was being born in my life. Like when God tells me that I can do everything through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And I could feel uh, refreshed and I could feel that truly I can do. And I could also read this one that the world says, you know, like the law of Moses says that you should hate your enemy, that, but Jesus said that you should also love your enemies. So I was like, I am giving myself permission to forgive myself and also to forgive others. So I was receiving that forgiveness and healing. And I, I, I was experiencing that kind of, you know, dressing the wood and putting the medicine. And it was like 
healing, you know, because when you don't face something, you don't even know what is aiding you. And what, when you don't even know what is aiding you, you cannot treat something that you don't know. And God have helped me to know that I lacked courage in my family. I lacked discipline. I lacked love. And I, 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 and I didn't know how to or where to get it. But today, I know that I can get that in, in God. And when I came back, the first time when I went in Egypt, I stayed for two years and I came back in Kenya. When I came back, it was when it, there was corona. At that time, I went, I, I, I stayed at home. I still, I was still in that um, victim mentality, but I was coming out from it because I was wanting everybody to change and I wanted everybody to see things in my perspectives, especially in my family, so I could try to change people. You know, that is not possible. So when you're not, you, you, you want to do it, but when you find that it is not possible, you become bitter. So I could also feel like I'm becoming bitter, you know, because these people cannot see things the way I'm seeing them and they don't want to change. They still want to stay there. And at that time, God helped me to know that he is the one who changes people, not us. So I should let it go. The only thing I can do right now is walk in compassion, walk in his love, feel every experience because challenges will come, difficulties will come. And the only thing I can do is to know that I am a masterpiece and I can do everything through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And he will not forsake me. He will not leave me. He will be with me. So when I went back, now I'm here in Kenya, I tried to draft the first book and I, did not, I was not able to draft it. I draft it a little bit and then I leave it. And then I, uh, by God's grace, I went back to Egypt by, on 2020, November. And that time I met a girl Still, she's a Kenyan. So at that time, I shared my story with her uh, through a YouTube channel, her YouTube channel. Something shifted. I felt like burdens are coming out of me. So I wanted, I felt like I'm healing. I, I felt like I'm healed already. I felt this peace that surpasses understanding, the joy, and I felt like I'm living now. You know, I'm not existing, I'm, I'm living. And God gave me a good job, a good job where I can, I have favor, you know. Like, not, I'm not forcing anything. Some, everything is flowing. And we are understanding each other in that family. It's a good family. Where I am, spiritually, they are there too. They, they are book lovers, so they gave me their libraries and also me, I was reading books. And through reading books, I discovered that even me, because I loved reading books when I was a kid, I can also start writing my book. I was encouraged. This is my book that have come out of the, everything that I have gone through the lessons that I have picked, the way I was able to change my perspectives and my mindset, you know, leaving behind that victim mentality and adopting this masterpiece mentality is all here. And if you wanna, you know, like if you would like to get a copy of, you, of this book, you can reach out to through my social media's handles. Instagram is Shiga Dombe. YouTube is Shiga Dombe. Facebook is Shiga Dombe. My contact is uh, 716 
1-6-2-4-8. I would like to appreciate my friends, uh, Cecilia Amanda. She was the one who made me, you know, get out of my comfort zone and not settle for safe. There is also Jane Onyuaya, she's also my friend. They supported me in Egypt when I was launching my book. And I'm really, really grateful for you, my friends. And there is my sister who pushed me to get out of my convert zone when I was willing to settle for safe. So thank you so much, sis. And also there is our ambassador of Kenya in Egypt. Uh, Major General Ayub Materi, I really appreciate you. Thank you for making even my event book, book launching happen. God bless you. I also want to appreciate my madam back in Egypt, um, Lasha Shiha and Mr. Heji Basat. Thank you so much, guys, for giving me an environment uh, for, you know, a, a, a peaceful environment for even being able to write a book. I also want to say hi to my family in, you know, in Egypt, Kenyan in Egypt. I'm really grateful for you guys for even gracing my event, my last event of book launch. And Madam Jessie, the readers, and also Madam Aris, God bless you.